What is the practice that matters? Now, I think first it's helpful to have an initial understanding of practice, of what we mean by a practice of prayer, a meditation, a spiritual practice. And to say that in a very broad-based way, that a practice is any act habitually entered into with our whole heart that takes us to the deeper place is our practice. And some of these practices we might not think of as prayer and meditation. Attending the roses, a long, slow walk to no place in particular, a quiet moment at day's end, being vulnerable in the presence of that person in whose presence we're taken to the deeper place, the pause between two lines of a poem. There are these acts that, that, that um, reground us in the depth dimensions of our life that matters most like this. So that if we're faithful to our practice, our practice will be faithful to us and it's fidelity to our practice. We touch God's uh, um, enduring fidelity to us uh, in and through all things. There's that. Now, traditionally, in the Christian tradition, I think in a broad sense in all traditions, there's a distinction between two modes of practice as prayer. One is this traditional sense of Lexio Divina, meditation and prayer. And in this sense, the Lexio Divina consists of taking a word, uh, a word is a scripture, or it could be any word of a, of a spiritual teacher or spiritual source that in the hearing of the word, your heart immediately recognizes that it's beautiful. And your heart knows it's beautiful because it's true. So Thomas Merton says, the most important thing in your life is something that you don't know and don't need to know because God loves you. That's beautiful. And it's beautiful because it's true. So Zen Master Dogen says, find that person whose words awaken your heart with the desire for the great way and forget everything else as your teacher. So we find this word where God speaks to us in the word, the lexio, we take it in. The meditatio is that it initiates an inner dialogue between ourselves and God. Where, where are we with this? How do we sign off on this? Or are we with it? We might journal it. So we, we take it in and internalize it into ourselves. And the prayer then is our heart center. See, help me with this. Help me with this. And so daily fidelity to this lexio, pausing. Rollo May has a lovely uh, little image in, uh, called the pause, the existential psychotherapist. He says, you know, the Olympic high diver, uh, on the platform, just before the person dives, they pause and they dive out of the pause. If they didn't pause, their ego would get in the way. All these people are watching me. But the fact they dive out of the pause renders the dive eloquent. And so the, the, the meditation is the pause. It's that little hiatus in the momentum of the day's demands. And then we dive out of that pause as we go through our day. And then we ask for the grace not to break the thread of that as we go through our day. There's that practice. A more contemplative practice is the, um, the use of a word to enter into a more contemplative oneness with God. So in the cloud of unknowing, this would be centering prayer. In the, in the way of a pilgrim, this would be the Jesus prayer, the prayer of the heart. So this is a word uh, that helps me in this contemplative practice. To, to sit and renew your awareness that you're sitting in the presence of God, like all about you and within you. And as you inhale, inhale God's silent, I love you, in which God's being poured out and utterly given away to you as the miracle of your very life. If we think of God as generosity, that you are the generosity of God poured out like this. And then when you exhale, exhale yourself in love and giving yourself in love to the love that with the next inhalation will give itself to you. And so I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. From the reciprocity of love, destiny is fulfilled and the foundations of suffering are healed. Now as we sit this way, suffering arises. And the suffering then might be our anxiety and concerns about the pandemic, and understandably so for ourselves, for our loved ones, for the world. 
And as we sit in the midst of the arising of the anxiety, when we inhale, we inhale this love of God, loving us through and through and through and through anxiety and all, finding no hindrance in our anxiety, to loving us so unexplainably forever. And then when we exhale, we exhale ourselves in love, anxiety and all, to the love that loves us, anxiety and all, as practice, as a practice. And uh, this requires gentle perseverance because anxiety arises again and doesn't automatically go away. But if it doesn't automatically go away, we sit with it, we lean into it again, and we hold fast to this love that sustains us in the midst of things. And um, it is in this way, little by little by little, we come to understand the unsubstantiality of everything but love. That love and love alone has the authority to name who we are. It's the, it's the deathless beauty of the infinite love of God being poured out. That it alone has the authority and the substance and the reality of ourself. This practice then experientially grounds us in this love wisdom. And this love wisdom grounded in practice empowers us to go out and share this with other people in the circumstances in which we find ourselves. And uh, so I, I would answer that.